This is Matt from Hologram Electronics, and today we're going to be talking about how to use microcosm as an external audio effect in DAWs like Ableton and Logic. In this demo, we'll be using a Scarlett 6i6, which in addition to the standard stereo outputs, has an additional two quarter inch outputs, outputs three and four. If you want to run stereo signals to microcosm, you'll need a dual mono to stereo cable like this one. To get started, we're going to enter global configuration and change microcosm's input level to line level. This eliminates the need for a reamp box. Then we'll change it to stereo input mode as well because we're going to be running stereo signals to it today. Outputs 3 and 4 of the interface will be connected to the input on the microcosm. Then microcosm's left and right outputs will be connected to inputs 1 and 2 on the scarlet. That may sound a little bit confusing, so here is a diagram. If your interface has additional outputs, you may have a mixing software similar to this one. We want to go to output routing and make sure that outputs 3 and 4 are not receiving DAW playback 1 and 2. Instead, we want it to receive DAW playback 3 and 4. If it were set to DAW playback 1 and 2 and you went to monitor it, it would create a feedback loop. That would be bad. So here we are in an Ableton session and here's a short drum loop. The first thing we're going to do is go to Preferences and then Input and Output Configuration. Make sure that all of your interface's inputs and outputs are highlighted in yellow here. Now we're going to drag and drop the external audio effect plugin onto our drum loop track. Within that plugin, we select Output 3 and 4 under Audio 2. If we press play, we won't hear anything. Once we change audio from to input 1 and 2 and press play, we'll hear the loop confirming that the routing is correct. Next, we'll insert an audio track below our drum loop. On this track, we select the drum loop as its input. Record enable this track and record a brief take. If we zoom in on the waveforms, we see that the return track is slightly delayed, and we can also see that the phase appears to be inverted. To measure the latency, first press Command or Control 4 to disable the grid lines. If we drag from what appears to be the beginning of this waveform and hover over the region we have highlighted, we see that this duration is about 6 milliseconds. This is the hardware latency that we need to compensate for. So we'll delete the recorded audio and head back to the external audio effect plugin on the drum loop track. We'll invert the phase and type in 6 milliseconds in the hardware latency box. We're now ready to dial in a sound. Okay, now we'll increase the mix on Microcosm to 100% and record the return track into the session. We'll disable the external audio effect plugin, and pressing play we hear essentially a 50-50 ratio between dry signal and the affected signal coming from Microcosm. I prefer to keep the original audio track in the session and then have the return track where Microcosm was recorded at 100% wet because mixing in that track is kind of like turning up the mix knob on Microcosm. We are in Logic now. This is an older version of Logic, but it works the same way. Same deal here, we have a drum loop. First thing we're going to do is add the I.O. plugin to this track. Similar to the external audio effect plugin in Ableton, here we'll select the inputs and outputs for the routing. We'll make the outputs 3 and 4 and inputs 1 and 2 as per the routing we discussed in the intro. When we press play, we hear it, which is a good sign. And when we turn up mix on Microcosm, sound is coming through. One feature that Logic has here that I do think is helpful is this little ping button. 
This will send a short click through your signal chain and automatically calculate the latency. Ours is 246 samples. Once we have that, we'll go into Preferences, Audio, and change the recording delay to minus 246 samples. Now we'll disable the I.O. plugin and change the output of the drum loop track to output 3 and 4. We'll make a new audio track with channels 1 and 2 as its input. Increase Microcosm's mix to 100% and hit record. Go back to the drum loop track and change its output back to output 1 and 2. As we bring in the Microcosm return track, we'll hear a mix of both the dry loop and the process signal. Yeah, we hope that was helpful. Thanks for watching and let us know in the comments below some other topics you'd like us to cover in future videos. To play us out, here's a track we made in Logic using Microcosm to process a lot of different sounds using the method we discussed today.